not raised upon any faith. I had studied books of different religions in my quest to find truth. I returned the Quran to the library and said to myself, Islam is nothing for me. I was 19. Four years later, I had built up a career and a life many dreams of. My own department in a vibrant European city, a well-paid job, expensive clothes, and freedom to do whatever I liked. One summer evening, I sat on a balcony conversing with my Muslim friend. If I get married, I want to raise my children as Muslims. Even though I am not practicing much of Islam myself, my friend said. I remember my response clearly. The concepts of heaven and hell are just too far-fetched. I will never believe in that. I will never ever become a Muslim. Never say never? My friend replied. I nodded my head vigorously. Never, I said. Little did I know how my life would be changed upside down. Two years later, I was sitting in a friend's car. Going through some papers, I came across a little book. What's this? I remember myself asking. My friend told me to take it home with me and I casually slid it in my pocket. That evening, I went to sleep and had the worst nightmare I had ever experienced. I was standing in a dark space and was surrounded by a huge black beast that was panting on me. I could feel its disgusting breath and felt my chest was being crushed. So I woke up sweating and frightened. And as if on automatic pilot, I found myself walking in the dark towards the cupboard in the living room, reaching out and grabbing the little book from my friend's car. It was all I thought of to do in my moment of fear. It was the fortress of Muslim, an Islamic supplication book. And holding it tightly to my chest, I run back to bed and switched on my beside lamp. I opened the book randomly and to my surprise, written on that page was what to say when having a bad dream. As if being controlled, I whispered the words I saw in transliteration. There was Arabic written too, but I had no idea what that said. The next morning, a friend called and asked me to come to a gathering and I agreed. Now, the same friend had been asking me for a year to join her to attend a weekly Islamic lecture. For a whole year, I had made excuses as I had no interest to do so and today I felt I had to go. When we arrived, a large group of girls and women were sitting on the floor chatting. Some were scarves, others not. All of a sudden, their chattering faded as a lady came in. The first thing I thought was how she looked like my mother, only covered in a hijab. She started speaking to the crowd and when she announced that day's topic, my heart jumped. Dreams. After an introduction, she described a dream exactly I had. A dark black beast chasing her and then said she had those dreams just before she came to Islam. My head was a spinning. Was this all coincidence? Right then and there, I made a promise. I was going to prove to myself that Islam was nothing for me. In the next few months, I vigorously studied Islamic literature and attended gatherings. I had a strange desire to listen to Islamic reminders when I come to home from work. I could not wait to return home and listen to lectures for hours. My mission to disregard Islam in my life for once and for all was taking a turn. I started eating with my right hand and only halal foods. And I started to look into how to perform the prayer. Muslims around me noticed and kept saying, Say your testimony of faith to enter Islam. You can say it with me. What are you waiting for? They started sending me scary reminders about the punishment of not performing the prayer, not covering up properly, etc. And I was getting slightly annoyed. I turned to myself away from people. I had read about the accountability of all your deeds as soon as you had entered Islam. I was not ready. One afternoon, which I remember like yesterday, I was standing alone in my kitchen. All of a sudden, I felt this extraordinary, overwhelming sense of awareness. 
like it was just me and God. This was it. This was the moment. In that tiny kitchen, in that busy city where I lived far away from my family, I looked up and uttered the testimony of faith. All alone, what I had touched upon seven years before, what I then had moved away from so far, and then had tried to block out my life for good, was returned for me that destined day. Soon after, I started performing the prayer regularly, and while prostrating, I found myself begging Allah for two matters, to make me ready for the hijab and to use me as a tool to benefit the Muslim nation. These supplications were not in any fancy words. I had no knowledge of Arabic, but I remember how intensely close I felt to God uttering them. As a public relations consultant, I was not wearing anything representing my new faith. After supplicating for weeks, one morning I decided to wear the hijab and went to work. That same afternoon, I was called in by the CEO and told my contract would end that same week. For some reason, instead of feeling angry and upset, losing my job, my source of income and worrying about my rent and livelihood, I felt a strange type of peace inside. This door was shut and it was fine. As a break, I traveled to the United Kingdom and within a year, I got married, went on Hajj, had my first son, set up an organization to support women in need, and was given the opportunity to teach Quran, Islamic studies, and publish Islamic books and articles. I still humbly feel this is an answer to that various supplication I repeated and repeated when I entered Islam. O oh Allah, use me as a tool to benefit the Muslim Ummah. Many doors were shut in my life, losing my job, people, and my home. But one beautiful attribute of God will always have a special meaning in my journey. The opener, Al-Fatah, opened doors to the ultimate goodness instead. Islam, never say never.